cute smiles fool you. We take play pretty seriously. But not all of us get the same opportunities to stay active, especially girls. With Made to Play, Nike is committed to getting all kids moving. But they can't do it alone. That's where you come in. Our future is a team sport, and we need all the players we can get. If you're willing, we're ready to show the world exactly what we're made to do. We were made for this. Are you? Alan Morris, General Manager of Made to Play and Social Community Impact here at Nike. Thank you for joining us for a conversation on changing the game and our celebration of International Day of the Girl. I'd like to welcome our Nike employees, Nike members, partners, friends, and members of the media watching today. International Day of the Girl is a day to reimagine a better world inspired by girls, and that world definitely includes play and sport. Over the last week, we've celebrated across our platforms, earning our International Day of the Girl badges with NRC, and feeling inspired by so many of our Nike athletes on social media. Today, live and via video, we're going to hear from an amazing group of female athletes, both women who've changed the game and girls who show us that girls are made to play. Overall, girls face complex barriers to play and sport. They drop out at twice the rate of boys and get fewer sport opportunities to begin with. And whether we're talking about elite athletes, school or girls just getting started, we've all felt those challenges by sport and play environments that weren't built for us. But girls love to play the game, not the girl. Here at Nike, we're working to help level that playing field by listening to the voice of the athlete, supporting community-based solutions, and investing in inclusion-led coaching. Around the world, we work with 90 partners in more than 20 countries for getting girls moving. And it's important to remember that many of the ways to change sport for the better for girls are helpful for all athletes, regardless of background, gender identity, ability, or aspiration. Now, since the theme of International Day of the Girl 2020 is My Voice, Our Equal Future, ESPN's LaChina Robinson sat down with young female athletes, including Portland Thorns soccer player Olivia Moultrie, to learn about their experiences in play and sport. LaChina is a college basketball and WNBA analyst for ESPN and a member of the board of directors of the Women's Sports Foundation. Along with our friends at ESPN and the Women's Sports Foundation, she's working, like we are, to help more girls build leadership and life skills through access to sport. A soon to be released report by ESPN and WSF highlights why girls love to play. They see themselves as better leaders, they have an easier time focusing in school, and they feel healthier, just to name a few reasons. All themes that our panel touched on in their conversation. So let's hear what they had to say. Hello, and thank you for joining this fantastic group of female athletes today. I'm LaChina Robinson, an ESPN analyst and board member for the Women's Sports Foundation, and I am so excited to be talking with such an amazing and talented group of athletes. As Caitlin mentioned, the Sports for Life Impact Study shows how incredibly important sports are to a young person's development, and these girls are living proof of exactly that. I can't think of a better way to celebrate International Day of the Girl than by joining Nike to talk to girls about their experiences in play and in sport. So I know, you're ready to meet them, right? All right. First, we have Olivia Moultrie, who plays for Portland Thorns FC. She joined the Thorns Academy in 2019, making her the youngest American female soccer player to turn pro at age 13. Next, we have Leah and Sianna, both represented the Sacramento Kings as part of the inaugural class of Game Growers, a partnership between Nike, the NBA, and WNBA to help more girls access sport. Both play basketball and helped to develop more ideas to support girls in sport as part of the Game Growers program. Welcome, girls. And just as an F FYI, Leah and Sianna are bubbling together, so that is why they're not wearing masks. But they are safe. <laughs> Sharon, up next, is a dancer and teaching assistant for Everybody Dance in Los Angeles, one of Nike's made-to-play community partners. She is 16 years old. Hey, Sharon. 
and Carla joining us from the East Coast. She's also 16 years old and is part of the Virtual Coaching for Change Academy, a made to play project between America Scores, New York and Nike to help train more young people to be coaches and mentors. She is also on the America Scores New York Youth Council. Hey, Carla. All right, well, let's get going with a question for everyone. Research tells us that, the gir that girls love playing sports, moving and competing. I know, I do, and did. We like to say that girls are made to play. I'd love to know why each of you love to play your sport or skate or dance and how you get how you got started let's start with um sharon well, hi my name is sharon and i really enjoy dancing because it's been a form of expressing myself through the movement of my body and of course when dancing i feel connected with myself and others around me you know i remember when i was three years old i would watch this um show called angelina ballerina and I was so obsessed with it. I told my mom, oh, mom, I really want to learn how to dance. So, you know, she did everything she can. She put in this effort to like really make it true. And she signed me up at Everybody Dance. And I remember my first class was taking ballet and I was four years old. So that's how I started dancing. I love the part about being connected to people around you. Like that's often the best part of, of any sport or whatever you participate in is that you get to know people better and you connect to them in a different way and, and not just verbally, also through movement, which is really cool. All right, Olivia, how about you? How did you get started? Honestly, it was pretty easy for me to get into sports because both my parents were college athletes. So it was kind of just natural for me to want to try out all the sports. And I did try out a couple of things, but really it was just as soon as I stepped on the field, it was just, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to do it for as long as I possibly could. And then it kind of just grew from there and I set goals and then, you know, I followed them and worked for them every single day. So that's just what I'm continuing to do. And yeah, and I love what I do. So Awesome. Yeah, our parents can often be that first example. I remember my dad winning all the playground championships. He wasn't officially a Division One athlete or anything like that, but he also, he always won the pickup games on the streets. Carla, how about you? How'd you get started? I've been surrounded by people who actually love soccer ever since I was born. My dad, um, he plays for soccer teams. I've been to his soccer games before. I remember uh, we were like very close, so we would always go together to soccer games. I would go and support him. And I personally didn't really develop the commitment and that passion towards soccer until I was 14. But uh, I mean, the reason, was, the reason was because I thought that, you know, it wasn't as interesting or it wasn't suitable for me because I was a girl. But uh, over time I realized that, hey, you know, I like the sport. I watch the sport all the time. So why not try it out myself? And they, were for, they referred me to kicking it forward, uh, my brother's coach, because my brother also plays soccer. And that's where I met uh, my coach, Sakia, and other amazing people that I now think to, you know, the start of my soccer career. You know, it happens for everyone when it's supposed to, right? Yeah. All right, Leah, how about you? How did you get started? I know for me, when I was little, I just knew I wanted to play something. I didn't know basketball, soccer, t-ball. And so my parents were like, okay, I mean, you can just try everything until you can pick one that you want to play. And I remember my first day of basketball just feeling different than all the other sports. It was like, it was less having to do with dribbling and shooting and more with, I felt like I was a part of a community and like all the girls around me, those became my sisters. And we all grew up and we played basketball together and it just became, kind of a family thing. And so I think I started and I continued playing based off of nothing having to do with actually playing the sport and just being able to feel like being a part of something and being a part of like a safe community. Yeah, that word community just really resonates with me. Like you have so much in common with the people around you and it's just a feeling of safety and connection. Um, kind of how we started this in, in the beginning. So no, that's that's awesome. Um, I'm kind of jealous. I'm not gonna lie that Sienna and Leah are together because I wish <laughs> I kind of had a buddy here. <laughs> um, Sienna, I want to stick with you. I mean, it sounds like you had a great start in sports, but girls face unique barriers like fewer opportunities to play um, and lack of supportive coaches. 
I know a lot of my friends who ended up playing basketball would often say that they were the first girl, like they had to play on boys teams before they eventually even had a girls team. Can you talk about some of the challenges that girls face that might keep them from playing sport? Yeah, so um, going off of what you said of girls playing with boys, um, a lot of girls start out playing on teams with boys, a majority with boys, and sometimes that can be the environment that they weren't really looking for because when you're starting out, you want to feel comfortable. And sometimes, and most of the time, when you're a girl like, like myself, um, we, I wanted to play with another female team with all females because I, I knew I could relate to them in a lot of ways, even though I was young. It's interesting, you know, you go to the park and the boys all pick each other, right? Because they think girls can't play sports and you're like, you at least got to give me a chance to show what yeah. I can do, right? And that's a message that I think is important for us to continue to get out there is, um, you know, sports aren't just for boys, period. Right, and right. That's what I know I thought at some point when I was younger, and it was so great to see other female athletes because it was like, okay, yes, this is a thing for us. I'm <laughs> staying. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> It can be a little bit uncomfortable, though, it, it definitely in the beginning. But if we get more girls teams, we don't have that problem. All right, yeah. Leah, Game Growers ask girls to help re-image sport for other girls in their communities. Tell us about the ideas that you and Sianna have been working on to help girls overcome some of the challenges we talk about and get more girls playing sports. So I remember when me and Sianna first sat down to talk about our idea on getting girls involved, we focus on fixing three things, resources, structure, and access. Because those are the three things that often girls teams or girls programs lack that boys programs sometimes do have, and it makes it hard for you to want to keep playing the sport. So whether it was resources of not having a comfortable place where you can go, like me and Siano would talk about times where we go to our gym that's up the street from our houses and we feel like, dang, maybe we shouldn't be here. Like there's boys and they're looking at us like, what are they doing here? And so kind of having a safe place, um, having structure, like a league or a camp or a community that really is just pushing for you. And like, there's people around you where you feel like if I ever need something, I can go talk to somebody and I feel comfortable where I'm at. And then just having like the access to the like things that you need, whether it's shoes or cones or being able to have a basketball so you can practice. It's just the small things that people sometimes forget about that, um, that girls truly do need in order to continue playing the sport. So me and Sianna's idea overall ended up becoming selling little bracelets like these. And they say, girls who move, move the world. And what they do is they go towards money for camps for girls to be able to come and play at a reduced price or for free in order for them to just have the idea to try the sport. And the camps have mentors. So high school, whether it's high school players in the area or pro, um, pro players from around the area that girls can truly look up to and be able to re relate to and see, oh, that's somebody who's doing exactly what I'm trying to do. And the mentors to be able to kind of show the path for these young girls and push them towards wanting to continue playing their sport. Wow. That is incredible. And first and foremost, I'm sure I speak for Sharon, Carla, and Olivia saying we would like a bracelet. So we would, <laughs> we will be checking in the mail to get ours. But what an incredible idea and program. And a couple of things that you mentioned, the convenience, right? Like if you don't have a place where you can go and your parents can't drive you to the gym, like access to something you can actually get to. And then once you get there, having equipment, like those things are so important. And I love the mentoring piece, like actually having those role models and those athletes there working with young girls so that they can see this is possible for me and I can have someone that can show me a move or two, right? So that always comes in handy. Love that. Sharon, one way to help get more girls involved in play and sport is to expand what it means to be an athlete and expand the definition of sport. As a dancer, which I wish I had some dance moves, but we'll get to that later. Um, can you talk about why dance is a sport? I believe it is a sport because obviously, um, if, I were to, if I weren't to be able to get like a certain turn, 
or a certain movement, of course, I try to get up and I try to practice it. And like in any other sport, of course, when you don't get that certain trick right away, you practice it because eventually you think, oh, I know I can do it if I practice. And obviously when you're dancing, you use all your muscles, you use your whole body, and there's a certain level of strength required at some point. So I feel like sometimes when you're a dancer, you have, you do encounter certain like things just by being a dancer. But obviously, us as dancers, we try and persevere. We try to do our best so that when we go on stage, we're prepared and we're ready. Just like in any other sport, you, you get ready, you practice for that big game. So of course, I think that um, dancing is a sport, you know, it's something big and young girls like me and hopefully younger girls, well, they won't be seen as like dancing is in a sport, but yeah. It takes technique. It takes practice. That's what I think people don't get. All right, um, Carla, to help girls, well, to keep girls in sports, it's important that we encourage them to try new things, to be brave, not perfect. Um, and Carla, you play soccer and even started to skateboard a little bit. Um, I'm too clumsy for both of those. But uh, that takes bravery. What inspired you to try skating? And what advice do you have for other girls that want to get into skating or another sport that fewer girls participate in? So I started skating when I was 12. Um, I tried a little bit about it. It, it, was an, it was a crazy idea, but I tried skating at seven. It did not work out at all because back then, of course, I was young, clumsy, did not know what I was doing, but I officially started skating when I was 12. To describe skating, I guess I'll describe it as something more than just riding a board because that's what people see, um, people riding a board. But no, it's mostly doing tricks and being able to control your body. I guess some encouraging words to young girls who would try, like want to try skating is don't give up and know that at the end, if, you re if you're really committed to trying a new thing, you will succeed. But all it takes is courage and motivation. That seems to be a common theme with you. I mean, you <laughs> yes. have a couple stories of, I tried it, really didn't work out the first time, but you're not <laughs> yes. afraid to go back at it again. And it, it does take that. Yeah. Like, no one's going to be good at anything when you first try. When exactly. I started on the basketball court, I was terrible awful i mean no coordination everyone was looking at me like she's in the wrong place how did she get in this gym but you have to keep coming back right exactly yeah olivia our conversation today is on changing the game you definitely changed the game when you became a professional soccer player at 13 like that is mind-blowing to me um something no one else has done in women's soccer what motivated you? And do you think your experience has been different than that of maybe boys or a male athlete? So I guess I'll start with what motivated me. And that has really just been, I made a decision very young that my goal, I think I was seven, that my goal was going to be, I want to be the best player in the world. And I made that decision. And every day since then has just been about growing and getting closer to that. And I've had role models, both male and female, and not even just in the soccer world. Like I've looked at Serena Williams and I've seen her achieve greatness. And that has been a big inspiration to me, or even somebody like Cristiano Ronaldo and just seeing his mindset. So I think really a motivation for me for a long time has just been greatness and to achieve that. And then, um, but ever since I have become a pro, I have definitely seen some differences between uh, the men and the women's game. And um, one that I'm facing right now is just uh, the difference in a rule between the MLS and the NWSL. And the MLS have a rule that um, teams can sign their own ac academy products right now and that they can play. And they have 10 players at the ages of 15 and 16 that are playing right now. And the women don't have that rule. It doesn't exist for us. So obviously like I trust the NWSL and I know that they're working on it. And I do believe that I will be able to play next season. Well, Olivia, we are definitely behind you, and we are always behind equality. So thank you for mm -hmm. your fight in that. That is such an amazing group of powerhouse young women. I love them for showing up not just to sport, but also for other young girls. And we're going to hear back from that group in just a few minutes. As Leah said, girls want to play. They love playing. 
but often environments aren't built to support them. Safe, welcoming spaces can make a big difference in keeping girls in sport. Two of Game Growers launched yesterday, so encourage a girl in your life grower like Leah and Sienna and help more girls access sport. Now Sharon from Everybody Dance talked about embracing dance as a sport and how it's taught her perseverance. As we think about building more opportunities for girls, one way to do that is by expanding the definition of, who, of sport and also who plays. Raisa Leal is 12 years old and she's doing just that. As a professional skateboarder in Brazil, she's changing the game for girls and showing us what the future of sport can be. We asked Raisa to share her story. Let's take a look. E aí, pessoal, meu nome é Raíssa Leal, eu tenho 12 anos e eu ando de skate. Eu comecei a andar de skate através de um amigo do meu pai, quando eu tinha 6 anos. E depois disso eu comecei a ir na pista, na época eu tinha muitas meninas e uma das que sempre me ajudou foi a Sara. No início ela que me ajudou a descer as rampas, ela que sempre me incentivou a andar de skate junto com ela. Eu acho que é sempre a falta de apoio e o preconceito, às vezes da própria família, da própria família. Eu vou citar um exemplo da minha prima, que parou de andar skate por causa disso. Minha família achava que o skate não era para meninas, daí eu mudei o pensamento deles. Ah, eu, quando eu, amo, eu amo andar de skate, porque quando eu estou em cima do skate, parece que eu estou em outro mundo, em outro universo. Então, eu sinto uma liberdade muito boa, é, com o, o vento batendo no meu rosto. Os amigos que eu faço, sempre quando eu viajo, aquela alegria de acertar uma manobra muito, muito difícil. E de sempre vencer os nossos medos. É, eu ajudo sempre quando eu posso, eu dou o meu skate uh, para algumas meninas, sempre que alguém, alguma menina aparece na pista, uh, eu dou bastante atenção, peço para irem mais vezes, também procuro incentivar através do meu Instagram, com mensagens positivas, sempre quando mostro, eu mostro que foi difícil chegar onde estou, mas elas também podem chegar. E se elas se dedicarem, eu estou bastante, muito, muito feliz que o skate feminino tem, tem crescido bastante esses dias, esses anos. Ah, apoiar bastante o skate feminino, deixar o preconceito de lado. E que eu recebo bastante mensagem de meninas falando que queriam andar de skate, só que os pais não deixam, porque eu acho que o skate é coisa de menino. Por isso que eu acho que a gente tem que acabar com isso, porque o esporte é para qualquer um, qualquer pessoa, e que você pode fazer o que quiser, tipo andar de skate, jogar futebol, jogar basquete, e que existe espaço para todas nós. Raisa is just pure inspiration, but also how she sends out words of encouragement to other girls. As she said, there's space for all of us, and she is a role model and a coach in the making. Studies show that girls are more likely to love playing and keep playing when they connect with their coaches, and good coaching has never been more important. Cared, trained coaches are crucial to helping kids get and stay in the game, but only a third of volunteer coaches, 27% are female. So our goal is to feel great work in the world to get kids, especially girls, moving. We built a tool with We Coach and Youth Sports Trust to help more adults make sports. We're supporting organizations like America Scores that are training young leaders like Carla, get out there. And, and finally, we're investing in great ideas from young women around the world to help get more girls active and bring the conversation in a big way. The China, Olivia, Carla, Sharon, Leah, and Sienna all talked a little bit about the importance of coaching and how role models, mentors, and supportive communities make a big difference for girls. Let's take a look. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about coaching. Olivia, I want to start with you on this one. Um, great coaching can extend to your peers, right? Um, and you're a role model for young girls and other female athletes. How do you encourage other girls who feel like they can't play? Um, and how have your Thorns teammates encouraged you the way that we just talked about um, that can happen in a team environment? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my Thorns teammates have definitely inspired me just like every single day, just seeing what they fought for and how they are, you know, doing the things like they're professional athletes as females and they are, um, we're all kind of breaking those boundaries together and what we're doing. So they inspire me every day and seeing somebody like Christine Sinclair who has been doing it for so so long and so experienced and having experienced so many things and starting to, you know, pave that pathway. And I hopefully just want to continue to do that. And if I do inspire anybody, that's amazing. And I want to continue to do that because I just want girls to feel like they can do whatever they want to do. Really. It's just like, I would say, if you love it, go do it, you know, and if you are doing it, set goals and want to be, you know, be great at it and accomplish your goals and work for them every single day. So if you want to do it, you know, go do it, go accomplish your goals and go work for it. And that's really, I think the best advice that I could give. Wow. Olivia, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be glued to your journey because this is, <laughs> this is going to be fun to watch over the next five to 10 years. What a great position to be in. Carla, you're training to be an assistant coach. Speaking of coaching, um, what made you want to become a coach and what's something thing you've learned as part of the coaching for change academy i never thought of myself as a coach um like if i look back a year from now i wouldn't have thought that i'd want to be a future coach or anything similar to that but in february this year i did some youth leadership training the idea of it really brings me joy the idea of working with kids and helping them be better people be a better you know future since they're the future generations and I mean, so far, I guess my favorite part of coaching is that the kids, just getting to work with them, seeing them grow. And yeah. Sharon, um, you're now a teaching assistant, a coach with Everybody Dance. After joining as a participant yourself, um, what are some ways that you try to make sure girls in your classes feel welcome and like, um, you know, that they can, because we can be a little shy, right, coming into to new environments. So what are some ways that you just make them feel like that's a, a warm and welcoming place for them to be? I feel like when these little girls come in, they're like shy, they're nervous. So I really try to motivate them. And I try to make, I try to tell them that like the dance studio is a safe space where they will have mistakes, but they'll learn from it. And they will learn from like, their teachers, but especially from their friends. Um, I also try to motivate them so that they see that like they shouldn't give up. Like they're here because they want to dance. They want to pursue this big, maybe future career. These girls, I, I want to be their role model because I remember when I was a dancer and I would see them, it just brings me joy. It brings me joy because it reminds me of when I was younger and my teacher was my role model, so I want to be their like little mini role model. Leah, Game Growers is a community of amazing female athletes from all over the United States. Tell us about how having a whole community behind you can help encourage you to play just like a great coach does. I think it's just about feeling safe in the environment that you're in. If you feel like you're walking into a gym and it's just you and you're going to have to play against the other team and you don't feel united with your teammates or your coaches, it's going to be a way harder game than when you walk into the gym and you see your parents in the stands cheering for you and you see your teammates like hyping you up, getting ready for the game and your coaches are ready and they're um, believing in you and clapping for you. It's just a different feel and the way that your community can really gather you and make you feel like, this is for me, even if I'm making mistakes, even if it's going to be hard and there's going to be those practices where we're running and I feel like I just can't go anymore and like my legs are going to fall off. Like it's okay and that's, it's normal and to continue playing even through those hard times when you feel like maybe I do want to like give up, maybe I do, maybe this isn't for me. Like maybe I do need to stop right now. It's just having the people around you and surrounding yourself with the people that are a constant reminder of you can do this and I know whenever me and CC um, are working out. We just worked out yesterday, actually. And it's feeling like, I was feeling like, oh my gosh, like 
this is it. I'm not running up this hill again. It's it's over. And it was CC right behind me, always like, let's go, Leah. Like, you got it. Keep going. Keep running. And so. Great teammates. Siana, you got her through that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we all need someone to push us up that last hill every once in a while, right? <laughs> Ooh, I remember those days. Well, you guys have been awesome in answering so many questions. My last question for everyone. Um, our goal today is to make girls' voices heard and to make sure coaches, parents, caring adults hear directly from you about how to change sport for the better. What advice would you give adults watching this to get more girls involved and in how they can help to change the game and not the girl? I think I would just say, like, kind of what I said earlier, it's just female athletes are the exact same as male athletes. You know, we're all striving for the same things. We're all athletes and we all want to compete. So really it's just, I would just have parents encourage their daughters to, you know, go compete and go play sports. And, you know, like, cause I think sports help with so many things, you know, they help with focus. They help with just growing as a person. They help with uh, learning to set goals and follow your goals. So I would just encourage parents to, um, encourage their kids to play. I hear you use the word goals a lot. I don't know if it's because of the soccer's your thing, or, but there's also setting goals, but great, great, great advice, Olivia. Sharon, what would you tell the adults? I would give them um, the advice to really see what their kids are interested in and what they're passionate about. So whether that's sports or dancing, and from there to just really try and get them to do it, try to get them to get into a sport or into dancing. And I feel like once they do that, once they take that step for their kids, then eventually like it's good for them, you know, because they'll make friends and then they will have this amazing opportunity to like grow, at, grow as a person, especially and to increase their self-esteem. That's really excellent advice because it's more than just sport, right? Like participating in anything um, can develop other areas of who you are. Like you said, it, it allows you it allows you to come out of your shell or it might help with character building or it may help, you know, so many different ways, not just in the game itself, but how it develops us as girls, as women, as people. And definitely parents should stay focused on that aspect of it. Um, I, I love that advice. Uh, how about you, Sianna? And I think as adults, they should um, be there to tell you, hey, this is part of the sport. And this is, um, you have to push through this. And you have to know that your goal, it, this is part, this is the way to your goal. And if you continue to go down this path, you're going to end up reaching reaching your goal and what you're working so hard for. You know, that's excellent advice because the first thing we want to do is quit. Leah, we're going to end with you. What advice would you give to adults? How can they help girls to stay involved in sport? I think that it's a lot of small things that come together, but I think the main piece of advice that I would give an adult is just understand that your, your daughter or your son is going to be the future. Like um, the world is going to be in their hands one day. And there's no other way for change to really be, for change to really be what you're hoping for it to be, other than to teach them that they can do whatever they want to do. Whether it's your daughter saying she wants to play football, let her go play football because that's what she wants to do. And there's not going to be any girls football players in the NFL unless you let her go try. And so I think it's just encouraging your kids and understanding that they're going to be the future and that they're the change. They can be the first to do what they want to do. And so there's no limit. There's no um, reach for the stars. I mean, anything is possible. So just continue to tell your kids that. My dad tells me every day, every time I'm like not confident with myself, not um, sure about what I want to do, it's you can do whatever you want. Pick, pick what you want to do and put your mind to it. And it'll definitely happen as long as you do the work. Leah, you could not have said two better words to end our time together. You are the future. You ladies are the change. I am so impressed by all of you. You are true change makers, leveling the playing field, changing the game, proving that girls are made to play. Okay, that was such an excellent conversation. Thank you to LaChina for leading our discussion and thank you to Olivia, Leah, Sianna, Carla, and Sharon you are all so inspiring and we have so much to learn from you. Now, 
We have a special guest joining us who's been a champion of changing the game. Please help me welcome Scout Bassett. Scout is a track and field world champion and Paralympian, as well as an all around incredible athlete and person. For those of you who may not know Scout, she lost her right leg in a chemical fire as an infant and spent the first seven years of her life in an orphanage in Nanjing, China. In 1995, just before her eighth birthday, Scout was adopted and moved to Harbor Springs, Michigan with her family. At 14, she participated in a meet with the Challenge Athletes Foundation and ran with a running blade for the first time. It was a game changer. Scout went to college at UCLA on a scholarship and continued competing, including in the 2016 Rio Paralympics for track and field. To top it all off, she is the fastest woman of her classification to ever run the 100 meter dash for the US. Hi, Scout. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> Hi, Caitlin. Thank you so much for having me. Scout, we've got a couple questions for you today. I'm going to just jump in, okay? Go so ahead. In this session, we've heard girls share some of the barriers they've faced. You face barriers too. What advice do you have for girls and women out there who feel like sport isn't for them? Well, first of all, I think that sport is for everyone, whether you're a competitive athlete or you're just somebody that uh, wants to be active. I think sport is so vital because of not only the skill sets uh, and the, and, uh, the qualities of leadership and working together and discipline that it teaches you, but and most importantly, perhaps for young girls, sport is such a, a tool to build your confidence. And I think that's inc incredibly important for, for young girls. But regardless of, of where you come from or what you look like, I think it's important in life to, leave, to live an, an active lifestyle. And, you know, no matter what, uh, op what obstacles are in your way to continue to push through and to find ways to stay active because it's really important, not only for your physical health, but for your mental and emotional health too. Yeah, that is so great. I'm gonna ask just a little bit of a follow-up because we talked, I mentioned in your bio that you received that running blade when you went to the Challenge Athletes Foundation. What was the sport like for you before that running blade? That's uh, such a great question. I will uh, admit that my journey into sport was initially uh, not a very positive one. And what I mean by that is that I was largely excluded from being involved in sports. So when I jo joined city league soccer and softball and basketball, I was often the girl that was denied the opportunity to compete and to play. And so this meant seasons and years of sitting on the bench, on the sidelines, watching everybody else get in the game except for myself. And, you know, initially this really had such a negative effect on my self-confidence. And that's why I think it's so important, whether, you know, you're an athlete or you're a coach, um, to find ways to be inclusive. And think if somebody had just taken that opportunity instead of fearing having me there because I was so different if they had taken the opportunity to say how can we include her how can we work with her instead of just ignore her I think that would have you know really helped me in so left alone or or such a monster you know and so um but thankfully because I got this piece of piece of equipment from which gave me a, a running prosthetic it really opened my eyes and the opportunities for me to be more active, competitive and eventually define Paralympic sport yeah that is thank you for sharing I just I think it's really important for everyone to realize that sport doesn't always the entry to sport isn't always easy and as you sort of said when you when you solve for people who have challenges, you're really solving for so many girls and so many people. And one of the things I know you care about is making women with disabilities more visible. Can you talk a little bit about the work you're doing to create the visibility and what can everyone watching today do to help? Well, I'm really blessed and lucky to be involved with two incredible organizations that are helping me to perceptions and the stereotype of people with disabilities and in particular women with disabilities. Our culture has men with disabilities as being heroic and transformers. And we honor them as being so courageous. 
gifts and honorable for having these disabilities, but we do not often portray women in that same light. And I think um, just from mainstream media to entertainment, um, we, we don't see women uh, with disabilities portrayed in, in a, a positive light oftentimes. And so I'm so lucky to work with such incredible partners such as Nike and, and some of my other partners that are helping to really change that narrative of, of that a disability for a woman is not a deficiency or but can be the very thing that makes her powerful and strong and beautiful. And that's the story and the narrative that I hope to, to create and to change in everything that I do. And so lucky to partner with CAF and the Women's Sports Foundation, which is helping to create more opportunities for women in sport. I think one of the things that people would be really surprised to learn about is that in Paralympics, um, at the Paralympic Games, only 33% of the part Olympic Games are female. And um, which is obviously nowhere close to the near 50% of participation, female participation that happens during the Olympics you know, working to continue to push and challenge um, the leadership and, and, and um, national governing bodies to send more women, to have more women involved in the Paralympics. Because I think until we sort of start to see that and we increase the number of sports and events for girls, you're not going to see an increase in participation. And so I just want more girls to know that the Paralympics is for them, that it's an avenue, it's a path. And just because you have a disability doesn't mean that um, you are a sign of weakness or that you have a deficiency in that. Instead, you are incredible and powerful as you are. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we've talked about the power of a coach today, Scout, to keep girls engaged in play and sport and creating that connection between athletes and coaches, like the connection with your coach, Tony Campbell, is so important. Talk to me about Tony. How does he motivate you? Gosh, I was uh, so lucky to find uh, Coach Tony um, a year before the last Paralympic Games, so in 2015. And, you know, up until then, I had so many coaches that told me what my limit or what my ceiling was because they – you know, sort of had uh, attached a, um, a stereotype or, or a thought of what a, an athlete with a disability could do and had sort of kind of placed that limit on me. And when I linked up with Coach Tony, he was really the first coach, partly because he had uh, able body athletes and, para, uh, and Olympic hopefuls and Olympians on his team already that didn't place that limit and thought that, um, you know, the possibilities were limitless. And I remember the, the most important thing, I think one of the neat, the things that I learned from him and I realized like he was the coach for me was in my first conversation with him, you know, he said, I haven't worked with a lot of Paralympic athletes or, and in particular somebody with your disability, but I'm willing to learn. And he said, what you need to know is that I'm going to expect the same things out of you, the same effort, the same work out of you as I do my able body athletes. In other words, you're not going to do less reps or less training or work just because you have a disability. And right there and then I knew that this was this was my guy because um, that's how I wanted a coach to treat me is the same as he would for his able body athletes. And I think the most important thing he's taught me is that the amount of time that you spend on the physical qualities of being a champion um, it's important to devote just as much time to um, the non-physical attributes of being a champion, such as determination, perseverance, heart, discipline, and that um, you've got to spend just as much time on those things, the mental aspect, as you do training your physical body. And ultimately, if you can do that, that's really what's going to make you a true champion, not only in sport, but also in life. Scout, you inspire me every time I hear you speak, um, and I, I've had many opportunities, and it's just every time different, different gems and wisdom come out, and I so appreciate you for being here with us and sharing your story. You are a true champion and showing the world that everyone is made to play. Good luck to you as you train for Tokyo. You know we're going to be cheering for you.
Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. This is incredible. Our pleasure. So as we close our program today, I hope you're as inspired as I am. We heard their voices. Girls are made to play. And as coaches, caring adults, and role models, we can change the game for girls. Active kids do better in school, in their communities, and in their future careers. And too many girls are still being left on the sidelines. At Nike, we're committed to making play and sport more accessible and approachable for girls because we know, and as we've seen today, the benefits are big. So here are some ways you can join us. Visit nike.com slash made to play to download the made to play coaching girls guide and learn more about our work with community partners to support girls in play and sport. And continue the International Day of the Girls celebration with us by sharing your girls are made to play story on social media using the hashtag made to play, just like Sabrina, Naomi, Amandine, Scout, and so many of our athletes did yesterday. Thank you for celebrating International Day of the Girl with Nike. Bye-bye. Girls are changing the future of sport by breaking barriers, by lifting each other up, and doing things people never thought they could. Girls are made out of grit, and honestly just have superpowers. Girls can make their mark on the world. They can defy all the odds. Let's show the world that girls are made to play. Together we can change the game, not the girl.